practice before you start the court. Get her so she so she's a little brighter. Where is she sitting? It's, whatever you're saying now is being black. Start your show. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're gonna start our show. And it's going to be our show today is the view from Highland Park. And the three of us. This is our first time on Zoom, so if you hear anything that isn't quite what we we're just trying the best we could do on Zoom today, and um, we're hoping that you enjoy the show. Uh, we first have Joyce Bernstein. Wave, Joyce. <laughs> I can Joyce, and that's 30 Minutes with Joyce. And you can get her show uh, also on Highland Park on YouTube, and we got Pam Chill. Pam, show who you are, and Pam. Chill out with Pam Chill, and you can get her on Zoom as well, and I'm Suzanne Conman, and I'm on Conman's Roundtable, and it's current events and politics, and it's called Conman's Roundtable with Suzanne Conman, and I want to welcome both my, my co-hosts over there, they're our co-hosts, and we love having you today. Okay, what we're going to be talking about is what's happening since COVID and all of and what's happening in the political situation and what's how different things are going since COVID. And we're all kind of just kind of working it out so that we can bring this program to you. I'm going to be talking about political bullying and Joyce, I can see Joyce now. Joyce is going to be talking about senior transportation, how transportation and everything has been hard since uh, the COVID. And of course, we're going to be talking to, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Pam, and she's going to be talking about how people are leaving the city of Chicago and coming into the northern suburbs because of what's going on in Chicago. And she'll tell you all about that. And Pam also has a realty license and she really knows what she's talking about. So let's talk about, first of all, welcome ladies. And uh, we have 30 minutes. So we have to get everything together so that everybody knows what's happening in from uh, the view. So let's start with, uh, let's start with Pam. Um, you were talking to me earlier today about people uh, leaving Chicago. And then you said something one of the things I asked you was why, and you said about people can't walk their dogs and they're afraid to walk them late at night. So tell us about what you feel is happening in Chicago while why people are, are leaving. Well, well Suzanne, uh, the majority of people who do live in the Streeterville and Gold Coast and River North area do live in condos, and uh, they some do have rentals and there's been a lot of lot of changes that's been going on. Uh, number one, COVID-19 has allowed a lot of people to work from home. So primarily to have a home office is what people really need, not to be distracted by other people living in the home and pets and children and the interactions that go on in the daily life. So a lot of times, you know, people have a studio apartment and they have to kind of reposition their, as we know, their Zoom to make it look like they're actually in an office and, and not in a studio apartment. And other things that they have to do is they need more space. That's, that's one of the reasons. And the whole summer that happened a great deal of reading and writing and safety is a factor. A lot of these people, because of COVID, went and got dogs that they didn't have already, you know, a dog. And they have to walk the dogs in the neighborhood. And so they lost saying, that sense so of feeling. So what you're saying, Pam, that they, they don't feel safe walking the dog? They, you know, they don't feel safe walking their dog, like, late at night? Yes. I mean, before they would go to bed, they would walk their dog, they'd walk it early in the morning. A lot of people, there are a lot of hospitals in close proximity. People have night shifts, a lot of nurses, physicians, PAs work there. 
uh, hospital administration that, you know, have to be there at certain hours of the night, and then they would walk their dog when they came home, they would walk their dog before, and, you know, amongst all this turmoil. Um, yeah, there's a lot of closure. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with protests and people, uh, you know, protesting. Yes. And, so, you know, here you are trying to walk your dog, and somebody has a shopping cart full of, you know, Gucci merchandise, and they're fleeing from the police, and the police are doing, you know, tear gas or whatever that they're doing. It, it, it's lost that feeling that of safety. You know, that, that you have to be always looking around you, aware of your surroundings. Before, in the real estate market, approximately 10% of Chicagoans would move to the North Shore per year. Now, it's, it's risen to 20% of Chicagoans are leaving their condominiums, usually condos, and then going to the North Shore. They are also uh, going to other parts of Schaumburg and Hinsdale and, and I'm, anything I'm, I'm that they're showing what, I'm under wondering, uh, 800,000. Pam, I'm also wondering that what we're talking about. They're looking for usually in a home. So, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering also, you're talking about Chicago, but I think it's happening in big cities like New York and other big cities. That it is. In New York, they said there's actually no Leaving the now. Because it's just so inundated with people moving out of New York, of New York City. And most of New York City, a lot of them are co-ops. So even though the prices have gone down tremendously on co-ops, they have a very high rate ratio of the homeowners association because it is a co-op. Mm -hmm. So they can't, you know, those who run into the thousands per month. And it makes it extremely, you know, unaffordable to a lot of people. Again, they had a tremendous increase of COVID-19 in the, you know, metropolitan area of New York City. So a lot of people, again, uh, you know, walk to work from home. They're all to work from home. There is no, you can live anywhere and work from home. You can take a vacation and work from home. Yeah, a lot no, of people yeah. Said, we're gonna you get, know, they're, we're gonna go back to that. So we're for gonna this. come back to that. I wanna come back to that, but I wanna hear Joyce. Um, she's having problems. You know, we're talking about working from home and getting out of the city, but Joyce who doesn't own a car and she doesn't drive it, and a lot of our seniors are having the same problem, and they're having trouble getting taxis and everything. Joyce, what is your what has been your problem with the, you know, as since the COVID started? Well, first of all, the senior bus is no longer running, and um, so it can't take you to places, and it's very difficult to get cabs, but because um, the it's a very long wait if you want a cab. And you could call, you know, the special places that pick you up and take you. But uh, twice, uh, some of those places took me to the wrong. They took me to the right address, but the wrong city. Once I was left at the airport, because they were expecting somebody to come in, and I was stuck there. And uh, I, I, they say not to ride buses, but in the in the suburbs, nobody's even on these buses. But I took a bus to uh, downtown Chicago for a medical appointment, and uh, I took a few buses because the train left early. So. Um, and uh, about 30 some people got on the bus when we got to Howard Street in Chicago. The suburban buses are fine. Nobody rides them at all. You probably, according to my opinion, you're safer on a bus than with a cab driver. But that's just my opinion. And doctors tell their patients, don't take, uh, don't take a bus. How do they know? Do doctors ever ride buses? Nobody's on these <laughs> suburban buses. I mean, some people just listen to everything doctors tell them. They're not always right. Anyway, so I got on. It was fine when we got up to the Chicago area. Then about 30 people got on the bus. No masks. They sat on each other's laps. Um, and uh, nobody had a mask on. I had my own mask on. And they were all sitting on top of each other on each other's laps. And it was really dangerous. I wasn't a, I didn't care. I, I so, I think, so do you, I I'm wondering when you talk about that, I'm wondering, somebody, 
some states, some places, they want masks to be compulsory. I know the suburban buses have to put a mask on, and they're in plastic to drivers. Nobody rides well, a suburban they should, they should demand, and as they should demand, and everybody gets into taxis. Uh, can you hear me? People that get into taxis, people that get on buses, they, people that get in airplanes, they should be required if you're sitting near somebody or being in a place that's confined like that, it should be compulsory that you wear a mask. Like when we yeah. go into a restaurant, we have to wear a mask. Most restaurants, you've got to wear a mask. And, and I know. You have to keep it on while you're ordering, and Rosary, then you take it off when you're eating. Yeah. I know. Well, anyway, all these 30 some people sat on each other's laps. And then when we got to um, where Why the would they be sitting on somebody's lap? They were all sitting on laps, over 30 of them with grocery bags, younger people, not real young though, but you know, 30s, 40s. Right. So, so, they so you're weren't talking like about how this has affected transportation, and Pam has talked about how it has affected um, realty and people moving out of cities, big cities like Chicago and New York, big cities that, you know. Yeah, yeah. New York, San Francisco, Portland. Uh, people are leaving by the droves, yes. In Highland Park, at the uh, the park there in Highland Park, people uh, ride with their kids on bikes. They don't wear masks or anything. Well, on, bike, on, bikes, on bikes, you don't have to wear masks. On, on bikes. I know, but and where I live... If you're, if if you you're the driver of your cars, and, and you, could, you could be without a mask if you're driving, I, I think if you have somebody in your car, you know, you make sure your guests your guest who's in the car wear a mask. Sometimes it's hard to wear a mask when you're driving. I want to talk about uh, how all this is, you know, we're talking about things that affect us and, and there's a lot of things that people don't realize that I just got off today, uh, which I was kind of surprised. I was going uh, onto, um, onto bullying. There's so much bullying and politics going on. And mm -hmm. one of the things I, I came across, which was how kids are impacted by political bullying and they, you know, how they hear things on television uh, and how people are treating each other and how this is affecting children uh, and bullying. I know one of my grandsons, it was very, he, you know, a lot of them are, they're so sweet, but I have one of my grandchildren. I know. Where he's been impacted. And then he's, he's saying some things that I never heard him say. And I questioned him, where, where are they hearing these things? A couple of my grandchildren. And they're hearing it from the news, which their friends are hearing it from the news. And they're talking, really, um, I, I, it's, it's, it's not even, um, it, it, it's with a lot of anger. And, uh, you know, and this, so, so this isn't affecting our children very badly and grandchildren. And you know, years ago we were talking today about the media and we had remembered John Cameron Swayze, Huntley and Brinkley, Walter Cronkite, Mike Wallace, uh, and right. Edward Al Murrow. They would report the news. It wasn't about what they thought. It was reporting the news. And now you hear, it's just a matter, it's just talking about what they think you know, it's all about, and it's not really the news. It's, it's, it's. It almost reminds me of the, in the Enquirer. Remember, we used to listen. We used to look at the National Enquirer. I used to look at it. Oh so right. Checking out of my grocery store, I would be getting that National Enquirer right before the, uh, you know, before you check out and start reading the National Enquirer. It seems like that's what the news is all about today. It doesn't seem real anymore. It's not the reporting of the news of the people we knew and respected many years ago. Pam, you're, I think you're, what do you feel? Uh, I think I agree with you. I think the news is slanted to the bias of the newscaster, the one who is directly producing or doing the written format. It, it's not as it is. I mean, things should be told as, they're, as they are without swaying to one side. It could be one political side or whatever, you know, you have affiliation with. Yeah. When you're through, I wanted to just say something. Oh, go ahead, Joyce. Go ahead, Joyce. Okay. okay. Even before the virus 
uh, young people that were bullied at school or anywhere. I've had a lot of people on TV discussing bullying. Anyway, they've committed suicide, a lot of children, youngsters, just because from the bullying. I mean, they couldn't handle it. So that's all I was going to say on that yeah, subject. And I, I just want to, uh, I just want to read this, what I got from the internet. Research, research consist, consistently shows that children and adolescents not only learn how to behave, from watching television and viewing other types of media, but they learn what is acceptable socially. Consequently, when kids see the nation's leaders bullying others, whether it's on television, online, they grow up thinking that is an acceptable way to treat others, especially if they want to get to, to the top someday. They are also some unintended consequences of bullying. And, and there are yeah. many ways that children are impacted by this. And it causes fear and anxiety amongst them. And yeah. they begin to mimic what they see. I mean, this is really, and, um, and, the, and the effects of political bullying and what they hear. And it's very, um, you know, it's, it's very hard right now uh, because I have, I, I have personally have 14 grandchildren and 14 oh grandchildren with 14 points of view. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. And, Good for you know, them. It's, it's pretty it's pretty astonishing and it's you know I feel uh, some are doing okay but I see between wearing masks all day and not socializing because of the COVID and not being able to go a lot of them are doing things online they're not going to school and how the, and I see um, I see a few of my grandchildren look very depressed when I see them either socially, I, I see them, or sometimes I can't see them because they live in different states and I see them online. You know, I go on FaceTime to talk to them. They look depressed to me. They don't look happy. They don't look like my grandchildren used to always look. And if right. they're looking like that, I'm sure this is, a, they're not the only ones. They're, it's affecting every one of the children. Pam, what do you think? About it's a very difficult time we live in, and our normal is not normal. You know, what we used to take for granted, we can't do anymore. We can't socialize, we have to social distance, we should be wearing our masks, and yes, we should still be afraid because if people can't touch it, it's an airborne disease, and, and we have to rationalize, you know, what we need to do to survive. It, it, it's a whole different atmosphere. And as far as the political situation, it's a very volatile political situation that we live in. And, and people are trying to sway other people to their beliefs, which, you know, they're giving justification for other means. Sometimes the means are very violent means, which is unfortunate because things can be talked out and everybody, you know, are, are democratic system uh, from our forefathers was based on two political parties, not just one party. Because that is considered, you know, a democracy to have two political parties. I think we should, I think we should follow like other countries like Europe, you know, Israel, they have more than one party or two parties, I should say, because we're not getting the views, we're getting very left-wing views, very right-wing views, we're not getting, you know, we're, we're, the three of us are trying to be as independent as possible. I, you know, I know my beliefs are, I, you know, what my beliefs are I try to be, you know, I, I try to listen independently. I know, I know you do Joyce and I know you do Pam and yet we can't, nobody's really representing us. We have to choose either we're Republican or we're Democrat. No one's mm -hmm. really representing the independents right now. And that's no. really, really hard. And our children hear it, our grandchildren hear it. You're saying that we're living not only volatile politically, but you know, the COVID, it's, it's on top of, we, the three of us went to a restaurant uh, this afternoon, this morning, you know, cause we wanted to team up a little bit and talk about what we're gonna be talking to you guys about on Zoom today, our first Zoom. So if it doesn't sound quite right, you know, we're, we're trying the best we can. And, we're trying to work out the kings as we speak. And, one, and the waiter, 
and the I got our waiter, but one of the owners, the one of the owners of the restaurant, he was mm -hmm. very anxiety ridden. He's feeling that he's, they're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. They don't know what they're going to be doing. Did you? Did you? Did you? I'm talking about this because I wanted to get your guys' opinion. I don't want to mention the restaurant because that's you know something that is business, you yeah. private because. But the owner of the restaurant, I was really astonished by his views and how anxiety he's ridden right now from the COVID and so scared he's going to be losing his business. What did you think about it, Pam? And then I'll get... Well, well I, I, I thought he really, he's hurting. You know, he can't, he can't sleep at night, which is one of the symptoms of having, you know, COVID anxiety that you cannot sleep at night. And all he thinks about is how he's going to make payroll, or how he's going to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's obviously shortened his hours, so he only has one shift, and, and people um, are obviously out of work because this restaurant used to be open much longer hours. And, you know, it, it's really impacting his livelihood, and he cares. I mean, it's a family business, and it has been in business for many, many decades. So it, it's just, you know, he doesn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, he does. And you, Joyce, Joyce, what did you think when he spoke today? What did he say? I said, what did you think when he spoke today? How his anxiety, wasn't his anxiety pretty high? Yes, it was very much so. See, I always say health is more important than money because I don't have any money anymore. <laughs> no, but I what, in the market. what about his business? Remember when I mentioned to get heaters? I said, well, maybe it would yeah. be a wise idea to get so the business stays longer and to get heaters, you know, uh, these heaters to stay open longer. Do you remember what he said? He said, no, it's too expensive. Yeah, but but I thought that even though it's expensive, you would at least keep at least at least two or three more months to keep it open outside for those people that don't want to come inside. You yeah, because people, people have anxiety going about going in a restaurant. And inside. outside, it's not that safe even outside. I mean, people don't well, wear masks it, or anything. Typically, and through studies, they've shown can that it is safer. Louder? But can you talk about the outside as opposed to inside? Yes. Uh, I've been to restaurants that were well, that's like the disease. They've been enclosed and we sat tables almost on top of each other. Nobody had masks on in different restaurants outside even. And they're just right next to you and everything. It's not but very if safe. You're born and the wind will, you know, surface, it, it will go different directions, the, the virus, if somebody doesn't mm -hmm. have the virus. Yes. You mean mm -hmm. if somebody sneezes or coughs or something like right. that. But it's safer to be outside than inside. Yes. They did an entire study of your likelihood of getting it. And there are different activities that you can do. And I, my, my recollection that if you are inside, that's rated as an 8 to a 9 of the likelihood of contracting it if somebody nearby has it. You know, a close practice. Yes, so you know, the mask outside, but not uh, not here where um, the studio the only is. Thing is uh, even getting your newspaper in the morning, if you do get you actually read a newspaper, that's considered like a one, or somebody delivering something to your home is considered a one to a two. You know, if they have if they have can be carrying it on the gloves. You know, a lot of people they even get a package. They wait like twenty four to forty eight hours before they open the package because they're so afraid that something could have been on the package. True. Was, true. You know, we, you know, there's been so much guessing because I remember, you know, uh, politically when, you know, I know uh, they got, you know, the president got blamed for, you know, no mask and stuff like that. But I remember in the beginning, they were telling us, they were really telling us not to buy masks because it would be hurting uh, the healthcare workers if we bought all these masks and they wouldn't have enough masks, you know, uh, but now we, but now, you know, they tell you to wear a mask, but I'm just, and now I heard that you don't have to wipe uh, all the, the packages and stuff like that. So it seems like, you know, 
like what you said, Pam, you know, you have to wait 24 hours and, and you said that the tables are close together. You know, you wonder every day is a new thing. And every day he says, no, that's not, that's not it anymore. You could sit a little closer together or you don't, or you can wear it. You, you, you know, you could go inside or you don't have to wipe your groceries. I think people are getting really confused by the situation. Well, what really is and what really yeah. isn't. They, they, they are getting confused. The CDC does different guidelines and then sometimes it's retroactive what they even said. But the latest that, to my better understanding, is that if somebody does have it and they do sneeze or they do cough or they spit as they're talking, it can travel as much as 20 to 26 feet. That droplets of yeah, on TV they said air. that they said the virus germs could come in from the central air and droplets into your apartment. Right. And people are doing special air purification systems. Uh, they're doing it in restaurants, they're doing it in health clubs, mm -hmm. uh, especially since, you know, they've changed as their Friday here. Uh, they can go to about 40 to 50 percent capacity. For, well, girls, I like know, to con learn, girls, I like to continue our discussion, but we're going, we're running out of time. I know we have 30 minutes um, but we, I think we ran over a little bit because our, our it says almost 40 minutes. So, uh, you know, some, some of you may get some of us cut off a little bit by what we're talking about. And we're going to come back on the view and we're going to continue this discussion uh, as soon as we can because, um, you know, if we're running out of time, Pam and Joyce and myself. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Suzanne. <laughs> And that's the view from Island Park. <laughs> this is our first discussion on Zoom. And Joyce, thank you for, uh, we changed Joyce's seat 20 times and we finally put Pam out in the backyard. So <laughs> we're trying desperately to get this show on for you. So I want to thank the group for coming today. And this is, and to, uh, if it comes out a little scratchy or not quite right, we love you guys. I'm glad you could put up with us. We love you too. Stay safe. And, stay uh, well. Stay well. Do we see the best? Stay well. This is our new normal. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. From the view in Highland Park, we thank you all for watching us today. So hopefully I know how to turn this off. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Okay. So, wait, wait, don't. Yeah. Lenny, how to talk? It wasn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> it's hard to hear you. You're not, your yours was the hardest, but it was the kid was outside in the window.